Now to a CBS2 News investigation. It is getting harder to trust caller ID. Scammers can now use apps to show up as a trusted number, including the number for your bank. It is called spoofing. And tonight, CBS2 investigative reporter Tim McNicholas is asking tech companies what they're doing to stop it. Through 12 years of nursing and through the horrors of a pandemic, Avalon Grimes kept going. Cared for patients and held patients' hands and, and cried with patients. But on this rainy day, she told us how her life savings washed away with one call. When I spoke with the police department, they told me it's something called spoofing. They could use an app and they could mimic any number and the number that showed up, the whole name that you would normally see when you would call Chase, that number showed up. Indeed, her T-Mobile records show the number that called her is the same international Chase number on the back of her credit card. The caller said he detected fraud and convinced Grimes to transfer her money to another account. It's a scam tactic that's becoming more popular. It even happened to TV star Andy Cohen. The phone rings. Again, the caller ID says it's from my bank. I pick it up. They say this is X fraud alert. There shouldn't be any sort of apps or any sort of like um, way so that someone could fake a number to make someone believe that it is a particular company. But on Apple's App Store, we found multiple apps that let you spoof phone numbers, including one prank calling app that let us spoof that same Chase number for free. It even showed Chase on the caller ID on one attempt. The developer says the app is intended for entertainment, and some numbers for banks, schools, and public safety agencies are banned from the app. Yes, that should not be allowed. Definitely will take responsibility in, make, in making sure to ban also international tone numbers. But Ayman Abdallah claims scammers don't use his app, and he says wireless carriers should do more to prevent spoofing. All these carriers need to collaborate together and also uh, change these systems, but the question is why? Why did they leave it open? If they did that, though, wouldn't that be the end of your app? Sadly, yes. And honestly, I would rather prefer that these systems would upgrade and uh, fix these issues. T-Mobile did not respond to our questions, but AT&T and Verizon both tell CBS2 they're already working hard to block spoof calls through various initiatives. Meanwhile, the Federal Trade Commission says business impersonations were one of the top scams in the country last year, up there with phony investments, romance scams, and online shopping ruses. AI makes it much easier for scammers to spoof identities. They can even spoof someone's voice. Claire Rosenzweig of the Better Business Bureau recommends hanging up on that suspicious caller and then... Take a moment, take a breath, step back, and contact the source. If they're saying that it's a utility company or a government entity, you call the source. You go to them, have you been trying to reach me? Apple says it has rigorous systems to root out scam apps or fraud, and it removed two apps we showed them because its policies don't allow apps that enable anonymous calls or prank calls. And Chase is warning customers they will never call someone and ask them to recite a security code texted to their phone, something the scammer asked Grimes to do to facilitate the transfer. I worked very hard to save. I'm a single mom. Now Chase says they're working with the bank the scammer used to try to get the funds back. But the scammer likely already withdrew the money, which means Grimes is back to square one in her quest to save up for a new home. Tim McNicholas, CBS2 Investigates. Such good information there. If you have a story you'd like Tim to look into, send your tip to the CBS2 Investigates team. You can email them at cbs2investigates at cbs.com or give them a call at the number right there on your screen.